Hello from Dwenza Garden here in Ireland and it's me Rachel behind the camera today as I often do for these garden tour videos. It's a beautiful morning and today we're going to take a look around my garden and have a look at the tulips because my tulips are in full bloom at the moment. So come with me and let's get to it. You are very welcome to this video and if you're new to the channel also a very big welcome to you. Before we start walking around the garden just a few words and those two words are to let you know that my garden is based in Wexford in Ireland in what is roughly equating to zone 9 so we don't use zones in Ireland but if we did we would be in zone 9. We have mild winters but lots of rain and the next thing to let you know that the garden is about an acre in size which is half a hectare so plenty of walking around to do today and we had better get on with it. We start off here on the drive right in front of the house and we're going to venture into this side of the garden this side on the right and there's lots looking good in here. And I guess you notice these tulips here on the drive. And these are Darwin hybrids, which are great big tulips that do a good job of coming back if you plant them right. And these always surprise in spring because they're so big and they're so vibrant and they're just so there when you drive into my place. And just above those tulips is this glorious viburnum that is scented to the high heavens. It comes in wafts around the garden and I absolutely love it for that. And just to the left of the viburnum, we have the promise of more tulips in the shape of two parrots that are just about to open. And these ones, for some bizarre reason, these two have come back year on year in just this particular spot which is weird because parrots normally don't. Okay so leaving behind the parrots and the irises which you see there in front of you you can see a primrose which is just going over you can see a rhododendron which is just coming and this is the great thing about spring and you can see lots of bucks balls and cloud pruning just behind but we're going to go right over there now. Since we were here last, I've been doing some work on the long border and you can see it there behind. Now in this section of the garden, some work has been happening in the shape of my own homemade compost, which has been laid on this particular border here, but also on the long border behind. And here is the left arm or the left central piece of my long border, which has just been given a whole load of mulch and is looking so much the better for it. And this is my homemade compost. It's very nutritious stuff and it does the border so much good, but it never goes far enough. I never have enough. And the thing about it as well, and we'll talk more about compost near the end of this video. The thing about it is I cold compost. So that means the center of the compost heap never gets really, really hot with the result that I do have flower seeds in here, which will pop up around the place. Even some weed seeds, no perennials because that doesn't go in. But the result of that is that I'll have to come back here a couple of weeks after laying the mulch and weed again. And if you look closely here at the long border, you can see the spot where I stopped putting mulch on, which is just at that yellow euonymus bush to the very front of this scene. Can I point to it right in there? No mulch there, lots of mulch there. Now you may recall when we last looked at this border, the soil was so, so stony and I do my best to put the mulch each year in a different place to kind of enrich the soil a bit. This beautiful tulip called Ballerina is now in full flower. And all I can say is that I definitely want more of it. I absolutely love the arrangement of colors and shapes in this elegant and tall looking thing, which is really quite small, but looks so, so good in the border. 
And can you see that peony there behind, which is waking up and showing its buds. And that's the next thing to look forward to after the tulips for me anyway. It's the peonies, my favorite herbaceous plant. And we have erythroniums and podophyllum over the shady section of this border. Trees are waking up and it happens so very quickly. One day you just see a spot of green on a bare twig. The next day that's kind of breaking out. And then before you know it, you have full blown leaves like in this beautiful acer here. And can you see what I see? The cherry blossom tree, the big one in the center of the garden is coming into flower. And what a beautiful, beautiful sight it is. Now we went off for the day yesterday when we went out yesterday morning, this tree was not in flower, but by the time we came back in the evening, it was, which just shows you how quickly things happen in spring and how wonderful it is to just see that life breaking forth and for us to know that summer is coming. And over here we have a quick glance at the cardiocrinum lilies that I transplanted last summer. Now these are the giant Himalayan lilies and anyway there's a video about it if you want to learn more but I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I don't see any evidence of buds yet so maybe they're not going to flower this year but they're healthy and that's the main thing. So now we're going to leave this section of the garden behind and venture up here where I have so many tulips to show you and some other things. One of the flowers I really love at this time of year is the wood anemone and this particular one is called Robinsoniana, obviously named at a time when the convention for naming cultivars was such that you were allowed to use Latin names. Anyway, this one is gorgeous and blue or almost blue, I suppose it's kind of violet. And I just love it at this time of year. Such a small thing, so unobtrusive. Something that I guess many people might notice, but I certainly notice it and love it. Another small favorite of mine at this time of year is this Omphaloides called Starry Eyes. And I absolutely love it with its blue centers and white edges to the flowers. A thing that is really easy to take care of. I think I talked about it in the February garden tour on what you need to do to make it look good in spring, i.e. cutting it back. But it is such a great thing. And I have it here at the edge of the hellebore bed. And just to the right of it, we have another clump. But as you'll notice, this clump is just the plain pure blue flower and that's because this comes as a result of seeds from the first it doesn't come true from seed so it will seed about you will get more plants but they won't be true you need to divide starry eyes in order to get something that will look like the parent and now we're going to walk into this section of the garden where i have lots and lots of tulips planted and these here over here these are the white ones that you saw at the beginning of this video. And then if I just pan over here, now you can see the orange ones. And these gorgeous orange tulips, I absolutely love them. And when it's really sunny, unlike today, they just throw themselves open so that you can see right inside their throats. Absolutely love these guys to bits. And they're across from the white ones. These ones went down last autumn. They were part of my uh, purchase, autumn purchase of bulbs. And I'm so happy with them. So there are a couple of other things in the border with these tulips. I suppose the first thing is the Saracenia beds. So these are the structures inside of the stone that you see. And these are carnivorous plants that will flower soon. And the flowers are amazing. Wait till you see the flowers. Flowers come before the pitchers because of course the plant wants to be pollinated. It doesn't want to eat its pollinator. So it flowers first and then it produces the pitchers. So those will come soon. But also beside these tulips 
is a lot of Cerinthe, which is an annual plant that will just seed about and do its own thing if you allow it. And I love how it has just, I mean, the plan here was never to have the blue and the orange together. I saw that the Cerinthe was there, but I can't honestly say that I, in all consciousness, thought it would look this good, but it really does. And that's just the great thing about gardening. It always surprises you. It always throws up combinations you wouldn't have thought through yourself. And a lot of them are really, really good. And I guess some of you will recall my garden tours last year where I was thinning out this annual, kind of just making sure that it landed where I wanted it to land and not where it wanted it to land so that it would have space and all that kind of thing. And yeah, you do this and then you get a beautiful surprise when the thing comes into flower and looks this wonderful in combination with these tulips. And on the other side, we have the white tulip here, Purissima this one is called. And it's losing some of its petals now at this stage, thinking about going over. But I do love this one, a really reliable flower. In fact, you're going to see some more of this tulip up at the top of the garden. I love it so much and I find it so reliable that I've planted lots. The orange one is the same group. It's Fosteriana, so it should be just as reliable. And I hope to see it for many years coming back and back and back. And yeah, we'll see it in lots of garden tours as time goes on. You may have noticed a couple more peonies in here among the tulips, one of which is this intersectional one, which hasn't yet been pruned. And that's because I do plan on making a peony pruning video. So yeah, <laughs> I hope I get around to it because they do look a bit scruffy until that job's done. This bed, of course, was planted up last summer and yeah, I think I made a video about it. You'll recall this perennial wallflower here at the front was one of the plants I put in. Okay, so as you can see, there's a camellia in flower at the back of the tulips, a red camellia against the orange. I'm not sure that's the best combination. Certainly didn't think through it enough, but it, it's okay. And some of the camellia flowers are actually gone brown. They should have been twisted out before I made the video, but you know what? I didn't. A little further up, we have some of those primroses you saw in the last video. This one here, my favorite white one, looking absolutely fabulous at the moment. A big mound of snow, I suppose, really. But I've contrasted it here with the dark leaf of the tiny little one here called Dark Rosaline. And we have Mechanopsis coming up in this border. This is the yellow Mechanopsis now, not the blue poppy that is so popular. But for my money, the yellow one is much prettier. And over here we have some more tulips coming up. These ones are Darwin hybrids ones I've had for a very long time. Well, actually, to tell the truth, the ones around the stone circle, same variety I've had for a long time. And these ones were put down two years ago. And um, I love the colors. By the way, I'm carrying out a bit of an experiment this year with this hedge of hydrangeas I have up here going up the back of this border. And what I've done is I got my husband actually to just strim the top across normally hydrangeas. These kind of hydrangeas, the macrophylla ones, need to be pruned by hand each time you remove the deadheads. I suppose essentially it's deadheading and you end up with a very good end product. But it's a lot of work. So this year I just tried strimming the top and we'll see if I get as many flowers as I did before with the other method. And over here we have a number of things I want to show you. The Euphorbia at the front, my favorite Euphorbia, looking absolutely fabulous. We have a Magnolia stellata on the left in flower. And I think I see the first tree peony flower opening just behind. Let's go and have a look at it. 
and here's that little path flanked by the magnolia stellata just inviting us to come down and take a little look and see what's changed since the last time we walked down here one thing you will notice is that the acer tree there on the right is now in full leaf which is great because it certainly wasn't last time we were here and there's that tree peony flower it's not quite open they are lovely when they open fully and it's a bit to go yet and i love how the foliage on this one is really quite bronzy it kind of shows off the flower quite well this is a nicely vigorous tree peony you may have noticed my other wimpy one on the other side which just does not behave but this one it does what it's supposed to and it looks great and over on the left we have erythroniums looking really quite well the sanguinaria which is the white fluffy one that you see on the left is finished now it's dropping its petals such a shame i wanted to show you that in full flower but we missed it erythroniums like trilliums are north american woodland plants and a lot of those woodland plants are so a choice over here in ireland they're just something very desirable because obviously it's not native to here and they do well they do well in a woodlandsy setting over this side of the ocean as well and a little glance at my trilliums which were moved not last year but the year before whatever anyway if you've watched the videos for a while you'll recall when i moved these don't know how this view is coming out we're just glancing through the planting in this flower bed to the section we left with the um, remember with the orange tulips just a moment ago and here we have another wood anemone this time it's an irish cultivar called lucy's wood it, you might think it's quite similar to the Robinsoniana, slightly different. I mean, this is so the way with most cultivars. <laughs> between The difference between many of them is quite negligible, but this is a lovely little thing. And for its connections, I grow it and I love it. And yeah, I suppose it's not my favorite wood anemone nor is Robinsoniana. My favorite is the one called Vestal that isn't open yet. Right, tulips over there. Let's go and have a look at them. And here we have a little glance at my two greenhouses. The glass house is actually planted with Fosteriana purissima tulips here at the front. And I have some yellow ones, viridiflora ones in pots outside the other greenhouse, the new greenhouse. But let's have a look at the white ones first. And I guess as we've progressed around the garden, the sun has come out a bit more because these tulips are throwing themselves open just that bit more. They're also nearing the end of their flowering and you can tell that by the fact that a few petals have dropped. So I was very anxious to get out and film this for you today before they disappear completely. You'll notice a couple of yellow and orange tulips dotted here and there in among the white ones and these are ones that have been down a few years they well yeah i put them down on video i've been doing youtube so long now that i think i've done most things in the garden in video for the last while so yeah if you want to see a video you can find it just to let you know i am experimenting with a new camera at the moment and really haven't got the hang of it so i hope that you'll notice the quality of the photography in this video is better and was in kokenhof for example that other video i did but my ability to maneuver and do sweeping shots is somewhat diminished i guess i'll get the hang of it in the end so just bear with me and over there we have the stone table complete with a trug of stuff that needs to be put on the compost heap. And here's a shot going across showing my crocus foliage on the left, my cherry tree just coming into flower and the tulips on the right. And I was sure you'd like to have a quick look at these yellow tulips up here by the greenhouse. These are ones that I potted up last autumn. They're viridiflora tulips, which means they have green in the petals. 
and therefore a bit more chlorophyll, very likely to come back if they hadn't been planted in pots. So what I'm gonna do with these is make sure I deadhead and feed them and then plant them out in the garden in autumn. And if I plant them deeply enough, as we almost do with Darwin hybrids and Viridiflora tulips, basically the return flowering ones that aren't botanical, then hopefully they'll come back again. I actually really, really love these ones. Their shape is very elegant. They're open now a bit because of the sun, but they, when they close up, you can see a very, very elegant form. And as a bonus, they are actually fringed. So there's a fringed effect along the edge of the tulips, which I wasn't expecting at all, but I just love it. And just over here, behind the glass house, we have my newly planted daylily border and it's full of tulips that are going to flower very, very soon. And in the middle, as you may recall, we have a peony that was moved last year. And if we look very closely, you can see that it now has buds. So I can only say that my method for moving peonies, as you saw in my last video, is good because not only has this moved successfully, but it is going to flower this year without interruption, which is great. And now we are just coming to the end of the video, but before we do, I thought I would give you a look at the big project that's underway at the moment, which is moving the compost. So if you only like to see nice gardens, then I guess this is the moment when you look away because we're going over now to see just left of the greenhouse what exactly is going on. So this is the last of my compost heaps to be moved. And you can see how very unglamorous this is. It is not like it's supposed to be in the textbooks, but you know what? It works for me. It has always been said that there are two ways to make compost. You can either make compost well, or you can make it easily. And I choose easily because I don't have time to be layering and getting a hot interior and all that kind of stuff. The result is that your compost is, is unsightly and actually it's going to be unsightly anyway, I think. So we're moving it somewhere else in the garden where it will be seen less. And of course, when the compost is moved, the stuff that is properly degraded at the base of the compost is being exposed. And that's what's going on my flower beds down below. Not what you see in the wheelbarrow here. This still has to be digested down a bit further before it can be useful. And there you have it. You have very much seen behind the scenes at Twensa Garden because every garden has a mucky side as well. You know, there's stuff you need to do to get the garden looking good. And that involves things like weeding and making compost. And so often this is kind of glossed over when we make garden tour videos, but there is that whole other element to it. We are going to end though by just having a final shot of those beautiful tulips in pots here at the front and to remind you that the next video that I'll be putting out will be a greenhouse tour video having a look at both this greenhouse here which is the working greenhouse lots of seedlings going on in there and also the glass house which has the most fantastic show going on at the moment with the protea and other things and also if you want to hear what's happening with my Fercrea then check back for the next video either on Sunday or Thursday. There'll definitely be a video on Thursday, but you might even get one on Sunday. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.